Hello there. Today we're going to be doing lesson 2.9, Multiplicative Comparison Number Stories. And yes, I know that word is hard to say. I have trouble saying it. So our lesson today is going to focus on multiplicative number stories that use verbal statements, drawings, and models. So we might see in our problem a phrase or a statement like what you see here in green around here. Notice the first one says blank times as long. Our second one is blank times as many as blank. Our third one is blank times as tall as blank. And our last one here that I gave you an example for is four times as many as blank. Now each one of those phrases or statements we are probably going to use multiplication in some fashion. That's why it says times as or as much as. So multiplication equations can be used to represent each of those comparisons. So that's what we're going to try to figure out how to do in this lesson. So let's practice and talk about how we would go about solving some of these problems. The first problem that I'm going to have you look at is this one here that states during the summer Darren read five times as many books as Julie. Julie read eight books. How many books sorry, did Darren read? So that sounds somewhat simple or maybe it doesn't to some of you. It might be a little confusing. So let's try to look at some ways that we can think about how to solve this problem. Now we know exactly how many books Julie read because it tells us Julie read eight books. So I could say that Julie equals eight books. And then we look at Darren and it states that he read five times what Julie read. So Darren is going to equal five times and then Julie read eight. So that means he read five times eight as far as how many books did he read. So looking at that in that fashion how many books did Darren read? He read 40 books. Okay, now that we write it out that way, it might make a little bit more sense because we kind of sorted out the information that the problem gave us. And that's what we have to do when we problem solve. We have to really look at what do we already know? What are we trying to figure out? What is that wording telling us? Because oftentimes that wording will give us some clues as to what operation we're going to need to use to solve the problem. Now another way to look at this problem is to actually draw a picture. And we could use J to stand for Julie. And again, we know that she read eight books. So we're just going to put an 8 in that rectangle. And we know that Darren, which we're going to just use a D to stand for Darren, was 5 times as many as that. So if we had 5 rectangles, and each of those had 8 in them, this is another way to look at that problem. It's basically telling us 5 times 8 like we looked at before, but you can also use a picture to help you represent and model the problem to solve it. We're still going to get the same answer because 8 times 5 is still 40, right? All right. So let's take a look at this one. The distance from Pedro's house to the library is 3 miles. The distance from Pedro's house to his aunt's house is 27 miles. The distance to his aunt's house is how many times 
as far as the distance to the library. So I gave you a little equation here and I want you to think about why did I give you this particular equation with this word problem. 27 equals 3, and remember that asterisk means multiply, times d. Why would I give you that problem? Think about that for a minute. It tells us what? What are we trying to find? We're trying to find how many times as far as the distance to the library, as far as his aunt's house goes. So we know his aunt's house is 27 miles from Pedro's house. So that's where this 27 comes in. And we know that the distance from Pedro's house to the library is 3 miles. So that's where we got the 3. So why are we going to take that 3 times D? Well, because the problem tells us that the distance to his aunt's house is how many times as far as the distance to the library. So we're basically doing a division problem there, aren't we? Because we have 27 miles and we have 3 miles. I'm showing you in multiplication, but we could actually use division to solve this because 27 divided by 3, or we could write it like this, equals what? That basically means 3 times something is going to give us 27. Isn't that what this is telling us right there? 27 equals 3 times D. We have an unknown, which is that letter D in our equation. It's my question mark down below. So if we know our multiplication facts and we know our threes, we know that the answer to this problem would be 9 because 3 times 9 equals 27. So this type of problem is a little bit tricky because the wording is almost backwards. At least that's the way when I look at it, how I think. It seems backwards the way that they word it, and it's worded in a way that kind of confuses you, and you really have to think and kind of take it apart to solve the problem. So in looking at this problem, another way that we can try to solve it, again, is to use a picture or some kind of model. So let's say that L is going to represent the distance to the library and A is going to represent the distance to Pedro's aunt's house. So the distance to the library is three miles and then the distance to the aunt's house is 27. So basically we're looking at how many threes are going to fit into 27 or 3 times what equals 27. Again, we're going to look at the different sections and if we were able to bring that 3 down there and fill it in on that 27 and keep adding sections of that, right? we would end up with 9. Now my diagram might not end up with 9 by the time I get done, but hopefully you'll get the idea that we're going to end up with 9 um, threes. Looks like I need two more there. And I know my rectangles are not the same shape, but you get the right idea hopefully. So again, I used a model, used a picture to help me figure out how many um, threes would be in 27, or I reversed it and figured out multiplication problem, three times what is going to give me 27. But our wording in this problem was interesting, in my opinion, because they used the how many times as far as. And the last problem 
they used times as many. So that brings me back to those phrases, those comparison statements that I went over with you at the beginning of the lesson. Those comparison statements are going to help you figure out how you're going to multiply or whether you can use multiplication and division to figure out what that multiplication problem is going to be. So to summarize with this video, we can write multiplication equations to help us solve comparison sentences. We also learned that wording helps us determine what type of equation to write.